I want my husband out of the house. He just broke down the door to the bedroom that I locked myself in. My dad's super drunk, and uh, he threatened to rip my head off, and he's getting pretty violent with my mom, and it's not the first time. And I'm pushing me against the wall and putting his hands on my neck. Get out of here! Is he in the room? Yes. These 911 calls have two things in common. Ready access to guns. Do you know if the guns are loaded? They all are. He just grabbed one of the guns out of the drawer. And all the callers were families of Georgia police officers. Hey, any weapons in the house? Um, he's a cop, so yes. Are there any weapons in the house? There's plenty. He's a police officer. Domestic violence is a crime in progress. It has a beginning, it has a middle, and it can have a very catastrophic end. Steve Searcy carried a gun for 40 years. As a lieutenant with the Montgomery, Alabama Police Department, he created a policy to treat officers like any other domestic violence suspect. Officers had responded to a fellow officer's home on three different occasions and didn't make a report, and they thought they were helping him. And then a few months later, he committed suicide. And if you mix alcohol firearms and family violence, you've got a deadly cocktail for a murder. Does he know you're calling? No. He's a police officer for Eaton Hunt. 2020, Amanda Peralt calls 911 in Putnam County, Georgia. It's my husband. And he's putting his hands on me. Who is? Of my husband. Is he, he there now? For, he is. He works for Eatonton Police Department. What's his name? Michael Seth Peralt. And apparently he's over there whipping up on her ass. And the chief kind of knows that, that he could have potential to do that. Officer Seth Peralt was arrested for family violence, but was allowed to keep his weapons while awaiting trial. Six days later, Amanda Peralt was shot in the head with one of her husband's guns. Peralt was placed on administrative leave without pay, yet he was still allowed to go train at the gun range that Saturday, two days before police found his wife dead from a gunshot wound. Officer Peralt claimed his wife Amanda shot herself. A jury disagreed. Last year, he was convicted of murder. Few police officers arrested for domestic violence end up in court. According to two years of cases we reviewed from Georgia Peace Officer Standards and Training, 87% of officers arrested saw their criminal cases completely dismissed. But Georgia Post found probable cause in 96% of the officers it investigated to suspend or revoke. So how did about half of those officers keep their police certifications? Because Georgia Post uses a special kind of probation. The certification agency faces the same problem prosecutors do. Officers' families don't want to testify. He's pulled out a gun one other time. He said he, he there is a gun in the home? Yes, ma'am. He's, he's a police officer at Roswell. He's a sergeant, and he's sitting my mom right now. Roswell Detective Sergeant Chad Harris was arrested for family violence in 2017. He starts to get really violent. This happens every night. To get, every night he's off. It happens every night that he's off. His wife told investigators Harris never hit her, but police photographed red marks on her face and neck. And the incident report said she attributed his aggressiveness to being a police officer. Prosecutors asked the court to take the officer's guns while he was out on bail, but the magistrate ruled to restrict the accused access or proximity to weapons would prevent him working as a law enforcement officer. The section restricting dangerous weapons on the standard bond conditions form was crossed out by hand. Do you know if he's got any weapons on him? Not on him, but he hasn't pulled the gun out before. After reviewing that 911 call and the incident report, prosecutors went back to the magistrate, who modified the bond to take his guns. Sergeant Harris resigned from Roswell PD. His wife told prosecutors she wanted the case dismissed, so they dropped all charges except disorderly conduct. He pleaded guilty under Georgia's first offender law, which dismissed the disorderly charges after a probationary period. Cherokee deputies were back at his house in 2021 after his daughter called 911. Okay, what's my dad is drunk and, he, and he's, um, he's attacking my mom and my brother. He called before. Okay. We don't have sirens on. It'll be so much worse. I'm not the bull asshole. I wanted you. The former officer was not charged in that incident. 
Harris did not return our messages and he is not currently with any police department, but he remains a post-certified officer. In the last line of defense is the Police Officer Standards and Training Commission. If they determined there was an act of domestic violence, should they be revoking these certifications? In my opinion, yes, because what's going to happen is that officer is going to go to work somewhere else. One out of four officers investigated for domestic violence by Georgia Post kept their jobs. Two were promoted by their agencies. Out of 37 arrests we reviewed, only one officer was convicted on the original charges. The rest can keep their guns under a federal law known as the Lautenberg Amendment. If you've got a conviction, not just an arrest, but a conviction for domestic violence, you can't possess a firearm and you can't be a police officer anywhere in the United States. Because you have to have a gun to be a police officer. Exactly.